Hello and welcome to another edition of Ryan's Tech Corner, where today we're gonna to talk about how we replaced all of our Raymarine electronics, including what we replaced and why. But first, let's go back in time. Welcome to 2007. This is my new chart plotter. Full color. So I can see my course, see my speed, see the GPS position. This is so responsive. We can even overlay the radar with the chart plotter screen. This is just like, this is incredible. This is like NASA technology. Very cool. So modern. Okay, question is, is anything gonna load? No AIS. Oh. It's time. Thank you, Raymarine, for giving us the opportunity to become your ambassador. Without you, we'd be stuck in 2007. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's rip this all apart and start installing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not how it works anymore. But I can just take the old stuff out and take the new stuff, plug it into the old cables, right? No. So before we can start our install, we need to really understand how this equipment all communicates with each other. This is so our radar is properly displayed here on a new chart plotter, or our wind information is displayed on a new multifunction display. And if we don't do this, we could end up not having the right cabling and it could make our install really frustrating and hard because we don't have the right stuff. Okay, so let's talk about cables for a second. So this is where we need to introduce some complex terminology, but in reality, it's really easy. So for our old Raymarine system, we used a communication language in a set of plugs called CTALK1. And it was really great. It allowed information to flow between all the different equipment, but it was proprietary and it was only used by Raymarine. And that's one of the reasons all of our equipment on board Polar Seal is Raymarine. There are ways to add other equipment, but it's a little complicated and difficult. But what happened in the industry was that the different companies realized it was hard for their customers to add their equipment to other systems like our Raymarine system. So they came up with a standard language in a set of plugs, and these are called NMEA0183, which is a bit of an older system, and NMEA2000. NMEA is a language or a protocol that's standard amongst the industry and it allows us to take information from our depth sound or our anemometer and display it on things like our chalk plotter or our multi-function displays, the small displays that show wind, like this. But what it also is, is a set of physical plug types that are standards. So NMEA0183 was the first standard developed by the marine industry and is used on a lot of older equipment like what we have here. But as technology evolved, that standard became outdated and a new standard was developed called NMEA2000, which is found on the equipment you see behind me and is what we'll be installing today. What Ray Marine has done is they have adopted the NMEA 2000 language or the protocol, but what they decided to do was use a little bit different plug type, and that's a plug type like this. And Raymarine calls this CTALK NG. So behind my nav station, we can have all the different information. Wind, speed, depth, AIS, everything. So you see the problem here? Our old system from 2007 uses CTALK1, which is not even NMEA0183. It's its own proprietary system. And while we can add new equipment to it, it's a little bit complicated and we wanna keep things simple. So because of that, we're going to add a whole new CTALK NG network to our boat, which means we need to run all new cables. And we all know that's my favorite job. So now we get to do the fun part. I get to show you what we're gonna install and I've been waiting for like a few days to do this and Sophie hasn't let me. So now I'm like all excited. So for this chart plotter inside, we're gonna install a new Raymarine Axiom Plus 9, which is this cool guy. The big difference between this 
And our old one is there's no buttons. So it's all touch screen. We're going to have this one inside the boat. So this will be mounted here. Outside, we're going to install a Axiom Pro. And the big difference between Axiom and Axiom Pro is that there's, there's actually a set of buttons. So we wanted the buttons in case we had gloves on or the screen was super wet. They do say that you should be able to use it when the screen's wet. We wanted to have the buttons in case the uh, we had gloves on or it was a little difficult for us to touch. So we've got this for outside. So one of the things I'm most excited about are these i70S multi-function displays. What's cool about these is on our old setup, we had ST60 Plus and a, a Tridata. So essentially we had a piece of equipment that would show us wind and wind speed. Then we had to have another piece of equipment that showed us depth and speed through the water. But what this will do is show us everything on one display. So we can actually select if we wanna see wind and speed, if we wanna see depth, if we wanna see AIS. All this can be displayed on one screen. Kind of chart plotter almost, although it doesn't show a chart. Screen with some buttons. This is a new high speed switch. So some of our equipment that transmits lots of data like our chart plotter or our radar can't transmit all of it over the uh, lines that we were just talking about and they need to use something a little bit heavier. So they use an ethernet line and this is the switch for that. So on this, we're gonna connect our two chart plotters. We'll connect our radar and we will connect our Victron Servo, which will give us all of our electrical information onto our chart plotters. And then the last thing. Oh, you're so excited about which that Which I'm one. super excited about. Oh is my this God. big box, which, well, how do we do this? Yes, Ryan, go for it. <laughs> this is our new Quantum 2 radar. We're gonna be replacing our digital radar with this, and we'll do a whole another segment on radar and the differences here, but I'm super excited. This is gonna give us some unique capability. It will use a lot less power. It's lighter. I'm really stoked. So now it's time to start ripping stuff out. But I have planned it. This is on the back of a receipt for customs. If you can follow along. Whoa, 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 not so fast. Before we go dig in and rip apart our old equipment, let's have a look at how we will wire our new stuff because we need to understand what cables we need and how much. Okay, so our new Raymarine system needs two things to function, power and a way to communicate information to the rest of the system. This schematic shows where in polar steel the components are installed, from the bow to the stern. We supply power from our 12 volts electric system, which is located in the middle of our boat. So our new Quantum 2 radar, Axiom Plus and Axiom Pro chart plotters, autopilot, VHF, AIS and network switch will all independently get power from our 12 volt battery bank. For the rest of our equipment, such as the i70 multi-display and autopilot control head, receive their power from the CTOC NG backbone, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so now let's make those components talk to each other so all information can be displayed on various screens. We have two ways of connecting the components to each other. The first one is through CTOC NG cables, and the second one is through proprietary Ethernet cables via the Raymarine high-speed network switch. All right, so first, let's have a look at the CTOC NG backbone. In our system, we will connect the following components to the CTOC NG backbone via splur cables and T connections. Okay, first off, our fusion sound system, because it's really cool. We'll be able to control it through our chart plotter. The EV1 sensor, which is a component of our Raymarine Evolution Autopilot. Our AIS 700 receiver and transmitter, our new VHF Ray 90 and its wireless hub, our new Axiom Plus chart plotter in the cabin and Axiom 9 Pro in the cockpit. The ITC5 converter box, which allows the signal from our analog sensors, such as the Windex, the speed sensor and the depth sounder to be converted and sent to the rest of our system. Our Evolution 200 Autopilot ACU, which is the brain of our autopilot, one i70S multi-display on port side and one on starboard side, and of course, the autopilot control head. For equipment that transmits large amounts of data, such as in between our two chart plotter or from the radar, the CTOC NG will not be sufficient. So we will need to connect the components together using the proprietary ethernet cable via the high-speed switch. Those components are our new Quantum 2 radar, our two Axiom 9 Plus and Axiom 9 Pro chart plotters, 
and our Victron Servo, which will allow us to get access to all kinds of information about our electric systems, batteries and water tanks directly on our chart plotters. Okay, so I think that's a little clearer than the drawing at the back of the customs receipt. If you can follow along. Today we're going to start on the inside because I think that's going to be the easiest job. We're going to replace the chart plotter and get some of the backbone connected with the equipment you can't see under here. And then if I have a little extra time, we may start on the outside. But I think the outside is going to throw some challenges my way. So, once all of the components are mapped out and the right amount of cabling is purchased, the installation is fairly straightforward, but each boat will bring their own set of challenges. We chose to start with the chart plotter, and our own challenge, apart from running the new cables where the old cables were, is the extra space we have where the old chart plotters were placed. One thing about the new equipment is that this is our old plotter, and this is our new plotter. And you can see there's a little bit of a size difference even though the screens are generally the same. So what we've had to do inside is buy a adapter plate, which is this black plate that kind of fills the gaps of the hole. And then now this new plotter, the Axiom Plus, is just gonna go in there, I think. And then we will uh, attach it. Hey! I just wanted to turn it on to see if it worked, but now we're in the setup menu and I can't resist. So doing some minimum safe depth, minimum safe height. The problem is I haven't been able to change it to meters. So I actually don't know what our height is. Let's see, we're like 18, let's say 60. Feet. Feet. 60. On this tri-data instruments, we also have our speed sensor, which is here, a whole bunch of cables and then our depth sensor, and then we also have our wind instrument, which goes to a different one. Because our wind speed, our log, and our depth sound are all analog, so it has those cables running in, and our C talk NG system is all digital, we need to have a way to convert that analog signal to a digital signal. So Raymarine came up with this really cool device called an ITC5, it's just this box here. You can see the C talk NG connectors, and if you open it up here, on here, these are all the plugs that we saw on the back of the instruments. So what we'll do is just plug those into here, close the top, and then plug in our backbone to this. We'll be able to get all of our wind, depth, and speed information. Get uh, some lat long, some AIS, and I think we can even, let's see here, yeah, we can zoom in. And then uh, some heading information. Just heading and speed. Yeah, it tells us a lot of stuff, which is great. So instead of having one instrument to do each of these things, we can have one instrument to tell us many things. We placed the converter as well as the high-speed switch in a hidden lazarette in the garage and connected them according to our chart. So day five, we're going to install the new radar. And to do that, we need to take the old radar down. And to do that, we're gonna take it off, put it in a bag, put it down the mast. Uh, and then the next step, we're gonna need to take the old radar cable out. And the radar cable is what sends the data and the power to the radar and then the information to the units. So uh, our current cable was run in the middle of the mast, so it bangs around and it needs to be changed regardless. So this radar has two cables, one's a power cable and one's a data cable. So we will run those and to do that, we're gonna need a mouse to run up through the conduit in the mast, try to get that through there. Then we'll take this radar up the mast, attach it, attach the wires and then... Sophie's taking me up the mast with the GoPro sticking out of my waist and it looks like I have a big... That was a lot of work. So I think what we do now is take the mounting template and just make sure it actually lines up. And then we'll try to see if we can run some wires. Okay. And if we get that done, I would be super happy. Looks like it is. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take my awesome, awesome mouse line that I found in Bonaire, this guy, 
I'm gonna try to run it through the conduit and up the mast. I have no idea if this is gonna work. By far, the most challenging part of the installation on board Polar Steel is our radar, as we need to run new cables up the mast, and that is always a bit of a... Pull it off. I am here against my will. <laughs> I love Go. running cables. Go! Go! It's the last thing that needs to work. Check this out. Got the Polar Seal logo on there. When the screen starts up, that's kind of cool. Although it's very white, thinking of putting it on the black background. So I'm really stoked to see what this like radar picture looks like. It'll be a lot more fun when we get out sailing and see how the Doppler system works. Look how fast that starts up. Holy smokes. This is the marina wall here. And this is like the town, a bunch of buildings up here. And yeah, our big changing of our electronics has happened. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. Like we've, Sylvie and I have kind of dreamed about this for a while, having like navs that we can depend on a little bit more, some newer stuff, some new technology. And now, well, we've got this. Super cool. Thanks, Ray Marine. This is uh, awesome. We wouldn't have been able to do that without your support. So, oh, very cool. So now that we have all these electronics installed, let me show you the next level stuff it can do. And I'm not talking about like NASA level stuff, I'm talking about like Elon Musk level stuff. What's an Elon? First, it's fast. Just swipe my finger across the screen and boom, I can see whatever I want instantaneously. Wow, that is cool. Second, we can tailor each page to see the information that we want to see, not what a designer wants us to see. There's so much data coming into our screens that we can just decide which bits we think are important and which we think aren't so important. Whoa. We can control the chart plotter from our phone or our tablet from anywhere in the boat, from the bedroom, from the galley, from the bathroom. So we can change screens, we can decide what information we wanna see, can even control the autopilot, and that's super cool. And some even further next level awesomeness that comes from that is I can display the chart plotter on our TV. Yes, I can show our radar on our 32 inch TV. Whoa, look at that TV. What purpose that has, I don't know, but it's really cool and next level stuff. On top of all of this, I can watch Netflix, listen to Spotify. I can even fly our drone from our chart plotter. I thought Netflix was on DVDs. Spotify? Oh, and I almost forgot. One really cool thing that you can do with this Raymarine setup is update all of your equipment, everything that's connected to it from the chart plotter, which was something that we couldn't do before. And for me, that just makes things so much simpler. Whoa, man, 2021 looks incredible. I can't wait to get there. That's right, 2007, Ryan. 2021 is incredible. Except for that little pandemic thing, but I'm sure you'll get through that fine. Just make sure you get your shot. Oh, and Bitcoin? Like, maybe just throw some money in that. Wait, 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 pan wait, pandemic? Bi whoa, whoa, whoa. Bitcoin? I've got questions. I've got qu Well, I gotta go now. I can't disrupt the time continuum too much. No, don't go. Gotta go. Don't go. Don't. Bye. Oh, what's this pandemic? Oh my gosh. Oh no, 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 no.